Adjusterpedia.com. Hey guys, this is Mark from Adjusterpedia.com. Today I'm going to show you what I do when I get a new claim in my inbox. I'm going to show you step by step how I set up the claim so that I'm ready to write that claim after I'm done scoping the property. This video is going to be part of our step by step claims process series where we're going to show you how to write and scope a claim from beginning to end. So to get started, we're going to start off here in Xactimate, and this is Xactimate 28 at this particular time. As you can see, there's one claim in here, and it's in bold. Uh, any new claim will be in bold, and you'll notice the grand total is zero dollars. That shows that I have not added any line items to it. Now, the only thing I've done that I did not show you, when I get a claim in, I'm going to go in. When I come in here, what I'll do is I'll hit this Connect button. It will go through a process where it downloads files. Any new claim will come in down here in the inbox. We'll just click the inbox. It'll show up here. Uh, I'll highlight that specific one, and I'll come over and click this Accept button. And that will accept the assignment, and then it will put it in the inbox here in bold. Anything that's not in bold will be something I've already been working on. So what we'll do next is we'll just go in, we'll double-click on this, and we'll get started with going through the actual claim. Now, as a rule, this is going to be mostly populated with all of the things you're currently seeing right now. Some insurance companies will do it different. They may make you fill in stuff, but for the many, many I've worked for, this is how it always comes to me. Um, if it's not filled in yet, then I will show you how I fill it in. Uh, so we'll start up here. The best way I like to do is to start on the claim info and the insured info tab. And then I just kind of work my way from left to right, fill in things in as I go. Um, so what I do is come down first and I'll... Um, I'll do the default things I'm going to do. I know that I'm going to inspect this on site. I know I'm going to do, um, I'm not going to do the on site estimate. I know I'm not going to print it on site. And I know I'm not going to do the actual payment on site. Now, what will happen on some cases, you might work for a company who wants you to do all those things. And then obviously you would click it the other way. Um, up here is the next thing I'll use is the date contacted. Normally, what's going to happen is I'm going to get that email telling me that I had a new claim come in. I will print out the contact information that they gave me on that client and I will give them a call and set up an appointment. It may be that I actually get a hold of them and set the appointment or it could be that I just simply reached out to them and had to leave a message. Either way, the date contacted will be the same. So I'll come in here to date contacted. If you click on it, a single click, it's going to default to today's date. So I just hit that usually because I try to do it right when I get it. With this, you double click it and it'll do the current time. If you want to change it, let's say I, I was not able to get to it for a half hour to come back and tell when I contacted them. I can come in here and change this to what different time I want. And then that's going to update. As we work our way down, this here's the claim rep, that's me. This is the estimator, that's me. These will be set up in the defaults, so they should always be populated. We can go through this in a later video telling how to set up your defaults. Going down a little farther, we have this mortgagee. Uh, if you look here, it'll show whether or not the the homeowner has a mortgage on that place. You'll need to know this later when filling out other information, so it's nice to kind of glance at that just to know. If this is left blank, that means they have no mortgage or somebody made a mistake, and they actually have a mortgage, but it's not in the system. All these others I leave blank, and then the next thing I'll do is I'm going to save before I go to the next. Now, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to work my way across. So I'm going to go to coverages or coverage and loss. Uh, in here, everything that's uh, there's their claim number, the policy number. They've got hail. This would normally be blank. You would have to come in here and click other and then fill out what the uh, particular loss was. In a lot of cases, I'll put wind and hail uh, just because almost any hailstorm is going to have wind associated. You might find some wind damage, in which case I like to put that there. Uh, next thing's next. Um, we'll cruise down. These things will all be filled out. You'll look here and you'll see the different various coverages these people have. And so this guy has 3.4 plus million coverage on his dwelling. Um, and he's got other structures of 343,000. And he's got a contents coverage of 1.3 plus million. What's important to me right now is uh, when I looked at his sheet, from the data that they, they sent me on the initial contact, it showed me he has a 1% deductible. So what I'm going to do is fill in my deductible here. If this isn't checked, I check across all coverages as a default. Sometimes you'd have another reason not to do that, but for most cases it, it'll hold. So then I'm going to look down here and say, okay, 1% of 3.43 million is, let's just move the decimal point twice for 1%, 1, 2. That makes it 34,304. 
34034. There we go. So now that is the deductible. And you might have a deductible that's an even round number of 1,000 or 2,000 or 5,000. And whatever the case is, just put that here. We're going to save this and we're going to go to the parameters next. All right, in the parameters, the latest checklist should have shown up in here. I just threw an old random one in here from August of 2016 just to have something in place. Um, next thing you want to do is you're going to, this would not have been here. I shouldn't have had this populated. But you would come in here and you would choose the appropriate tax rate. Now, what I typically do is I will go out on Google and I will just check the, just type in sales tax rate for, you know, just put in the city that, that you're in. Let's just say it's Burbank. You just type that in and it'll come back. Total tax rate for that city is, we'll just say this one's 10.4. And we say, okay, uh, there you go. And you'll need this in there because it becomes important later in the game. Um, all these other things are basically uh, defaults, and you look down here, there will be a header, depending on which company you work for, they're going to have a header, and so you'll have to have that set up in here, we'd have to show that on a different video, how to set that up, that'll be on the set up your Xactimate video. Alright, uh, last thing here is the uh, opening and closing statements. Some states have an opening statement, others do not. If you hit this model, it'll show you all of these are the ones that have an opening statement. So if we were doing this in, say, Colorado, we would check this, and this is an opening statement. So as you can see, it populates with their opening statement that they want you to use. Um, next thing, you'll hit the closing statement. And this one, for every company I've ever worked for, is the same 709 CAT FAQs. I just do that, and this is just some frequently asked questions. I've honestly never even read through it. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is go over there to the report management. And then we're going to take a quick look at this. There's so much of this that gets used in some companies but not others. The one the one consistency I found for me has been the general loss report they always use. So let's go through that and we might touch on a few of these. There's just, it's so varied on how this stuff works. Uh, one thing you need to know is click in and out of this report number. You'll want this to be report number one if this is your first time scoping this. It's just to say it's not a supplement or a redo. Uh, some companies want you to put a, an attention for whatever company it is, so insurance company, you know. Um, and then you want to usually hit the final report there. Uh, if this were a supplement, let's just say it's not the first time you've done it, it would be the supplement. Somebody went out, looked at it, and then they said, hey, we need you to add this to it. You would come in, in that case, you would make this report number two, and you would click the supplement button, but otherwise it would still be final as well. But we're talking about a new scope, so just wanted to mention that. I'm down here. Most of this, for at least the company I'm working for now, we don't deal with this. I've had other companies where they want you to check the estimate and they want you to check the photos button and tell how many photos you uploaded. But again, all this will vary every time. So they'll tell you when you get a new job with a new company what they're expecting in these cases. And we'll move over to the Remarks tab next. In this Remarks tab, what I do is I'll import a template. In this case, I call it Field Report or Inspection Loss Report. And uh, I'll just put in, I've got this, just a placeholder for data. And so what I'll do is I'll go to my Word document. I will fill all of that out with all of my important data that belongs to this claim. And then I will copy and paste it into here. And then I'll hit the Save button. And then that'll be it. Uh, I'll have to go through how to do all of the uh, reporting, which is the general loss report, uh, in another video. Next, t next tab is recommendations. We go over here. Um, this is one of the few things we'll need to do is this section down here. As you recall earlier when we were over in the insured info, you saw that the mortgagee was Washington Mutual in this case. So when we're in the report management, we're going to need to know that because right here it says, I recommend payments to insured or insured and mortgagee. If they had a mortgage over there, this is what we will click. Um, if they did not have a mortgage over there, we would do just to the insured. But like I showed you before, they have a mortgage. We'll do it this way. RCV, um, this can vary a little bit. Um, if it's an RCV claim, it could still be ACV that we check here. Um, in that, in most cases, it would be $5,000 past their deductible. So let's say they have a deductible of 1000 even, but they have a $7,200 of damages. In that case, we would check the ACV and we would end up at that point putting depreciation, uh, recoverable depreciation on 
those line items. Uh, that's a discussion for another day, though. Uh, that's just uh, just to know what something that's coming. So we'll hit save here. Um, now let's look at some of these real quick. Additional living expenses, that's ALE. You may hear somebody say ALE now and then. Uh, they're referring to additional living expenses. Uh, it's not something you'll deal with a lot as an, as an average adjuster. Um, agreed appraisal report, I don't know. Uh, billing sheet, I've had companies that want me to fill out a billing sheet in here. And they'll say, put the invoice number for that particular claim, attention insurance company. Uh, and for the one I was working for, particularly, they would have you come in and put a flat rate. And so you would have to fill out all your information, figure out what the bill was supposed to be, and then you would fill that in here, say $461, whatever it is. Um, then we would go over to the taxes and totals for this particular company, um, and then you would just put an explanation of that. You would say, you know, basically they would tell you what to put there. Um, so anyway, that's an example. Um, don't use that too often. Uh, let's see, narrative report. Some people would have you put your your general loss report under the narrative. Uh, it's just another way of doing it. Um, I, you rarely see that as much either. Um, let's see, there's so many. Um, activity report, this is another one that a lot of companies like to use. Uh, several do not, but others do. So you would come in here to the activity report. And in the activity report, you would put things like, when you first contact them, you would you would open this, and this is this is some templates I had from when I was using these a lot. I don't use them anymore right now for the company I'm with. But if I made an attempt on that contact, I would come in and I would choose that. I'll just give you a quick idea of how this works. Once you load these up, if this hasn't loaded down here, you can just hit the edit button. And then it will just have a template of what the specific one was about. This one happens to be my first contact if I hadn't got a hold of the person, so if they didn't answer the phone, I left a message, I would leave this. If they had left, uh, if I had gotten a hold of them, I would come in and say, the appointment was set for this time, I talked to them and it's set for that. And each one has its own little set of uh, just template notes. And when a claim was finished, you would want they would make you come in and, and do a claim complete, and it just simply says something like, the claim is complete, thank you very much. Uh, and then I had a few other things that I just use off and on. Um, what happens with this particular process and the activity report is once you add an activity report to this Xactimate, once you go to upload your claims or hit the send and receive button in your inbox, it will push the information to exact analysis and it will update it automatically for you and so then it will add an activity report that shows all of these things that you've added along the way. Now the next thing I always do is go to this sketch and a lot of different things can happen here. You could have a company who will supply a sketch for you, in which case it wouldn't be potentially populated here, or you might have to click a button up here that says download sketch. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to do this. Many companies will not provide a sketch for you. You have an option to make your own sketch or buy a sketch from a third party and import it. And if you're going to import it, all you really have to do is just copy it from another estimate highlight it, copy it, and then come over here to this estimate and control paste it, and it's that simple. But let's just say for the sake of argument we don't have a sketch. We're going to sketch it when we get there, so I'm going to throw a temporary sketch in so I have a placeholder. In this particular case, I would just go up, hit the rough button, and this one, let me scroll this out. Yeah, it's a gable, so I would just use that one. Uh, I would probably change this to house roof especially if it was the final rough, but if it's not, I may leave it as a house rough temp or whatever, just so I know it's a temporary. It's the one I go to put the real one in. I know it's there. Uh, what to do is change the properties on this to say dwelling. I've seen people do this differently. That's the way I was taught, so that's the way I do it. What a lot of people like you to do is change this to point the correct direction. You can see this is uh, north is to the right. What you do is you right click on it twice, go down to view properties, and go to the legend, and it allows you to change wherever it's pointing. So if your if your front of your house is pointing north, then you would want to spin this all the way down to north. If the front of the house is pointing south, point that north. And what we can do then is hit the T for text and tap on it, and we can put front and put a little notation showing that this is the front. Some companies like you to do that. So we might also have other structures on this property, 
like say for instance a shed or a barn, we would want to come down here, click on this button, and add another layer for other structures. So T U R S structure. Other structures. There we go. Now I would just go do the same thing here. I'll put a temporary one in for now. I'll just click here. I'll change this to say uh, let's say it's a shed roof. Okay, so we'll just make it a shed. Again, we're going to not worry about the details. We just want to have a placeholder for now. We'll come back. We'll fix it after we know what's actually on this house. My next normal step would be to go to the estimate items. So when we come in here, we can see that they've already populated the house roof and the shed roof. There are templates, but there's populated. What I'll like to have also, just so I can be as ready as I possibly can, is I would like to put in the elevations. So what I'll do there is I'll highlight the dwelling and I'll hit the Add button. And for this case, I'm going to use Continuous Add. And what that allows me to do is I'll start typing Front Elevation because that's the first one I want to put. And, and this one I'm going to put Attached, but because I've clicked this, it's going to let me put the next one right below it. And so in this case, I'll start typing Right. And you'll see as soon as I get a couple letters in, it's already there. So I can hit Append, and it's going to append it under Front. And to do it even quicker, I can start typing Rear, Tab, Tab, Enter. And that does that. I can say Left. Tab, tab, enter, and then I can just click off of that. And that's the quick way to put those in uh, without having to jump back and forth, back and forth. That continuous ad is a really nice feature. I would also tend to put in, if the other structure has damage, I will put those in after the fact, the elevations. Normally speaking, you're not going to see a lot of damage on different other structures. It happens, but more times than not, it doesn't. But if that were the case, I would come in here, I would hit the add when this is highlighted, hit that add key, and let's say there was damage on the right elevation only. So I would just put the right elevation, I would put attach, and it would put it right under there. If there was no damage on the front, back, or left, I would not add them. If there were, I would add the ones that had damage. When it comes to the dwelling, I like to put all elevations, and then if there is no damage, say like the left ended up having no damage, I would come in after that. I would add a note here that says, right there, no damage observed to the elevation. Now these are my templates that I've made, and those are simple enough to make. We have another video that shows that. If you check the description, it will show you how to find that video if you're curious about that. Now you see I've got these. One more thing I like to put in, debris removal. So I highlight that till it turns blue. I hit Add. I'm going to start typing debris. There you go. It's already there. Now I can just hit Attach, and you see it pops it in down there all the way under all my different types of coverages. Since it's its own type of coverage, I want it on its own level. And I'll go ahead and put my debris removal that I use 99% of the time. I use DMO PU for pickup, hit OK for enter, and there you go. It's going to have that already ready to go, so that's nice. Uh, what I'll do sometimes, if I'm in an area that's got a lot of hail damage that I'm seeing consistently gutters and downspouts are being damaged, I will then start adding things like, say, the gutters, so I would do SFG, GUTA is kind of common right now. I'm going to leave this as a default zero, and it's going to say, do you want the zero? I'm going to say yes, because if I forget later to take this off because there was no downspouts or gutter damage, this will remind me that I do not want that on there, and that's good. What a lot of companies will have you do is put a nine, an F9 node in here and say, uh, this many feet of gutters, this many feet of downspouts. So I have a template there as well. I go in, I add this to it. It says I'm allowing for it however many of downspout and however many of gutter. And I'll fill that out after I know the actual numbers. Hit OK. And now I'm just about as ready as I can be for this claim. If I get out there the day of the claim and all four of these end up having uh, downspout and gutter damage, I will then just copy Control C and I'll come to this right elevation and say, yeah, they had it too. I paste it right there, control V, and I've got that ready for the next one. That's really about all there is that I'm going to do on a normal basis as it relates to getting ready for a claim. Be sure to take a look in the description for more videos and playlists in our step-by-step -step claims process series. If you subscribe to the Adjusterpedia channel and leave me a comment below letting me know that you did, I will send you an updated list of over 70 IA firms in the United States with websites, physical address, and phone numbers so you can get on their deployment lists and start getting paid.